Good afternoon. My name is Joe O'Hara. This is FTE 217 Assignment 6. Um, today is April 18th, 2024. Today we're going to go over uh, five parts of Assignment 6. First one, we're going to field strip the firearm. Then we're going to talk about uh, things like we if we like identify any additional work we'd like to do the firearm once we're done uh then we're going to talk about different trigger systems that you can purchase for the for the firearm um we're going to talk about uh if we would dimple our gas block onto our barrel and then we're going to perform a modified drop test all right so First things first, we're going to field strip our firearm. Field stripping is when you uh, break down the firearm without actually tearing it fully apart. All right, so first things first, make sure you're always free and clear. Okay, so weapon is in the safe position. It's hard to see, but it's in the safe position. That's fire, that's safe. Um, no ammunition, no no ammunition inside or out, okay? So now we're gonna break her down. First things I would do is put my bolt forward. I'm gonna open it up. There we go. So I'm gonna pull my bolt out. the uh, charging handle pull that out and when you field strip a firearm this is uh, as far as you can get it done without any tools okay and that's pretty much it so I would pull if I could if I wanted to I could probably pull apart the the bolt the firing pin stuff like that but i don't have any specific tools so necessarily i wouldn't do that out in the field but this is as far as i would i would go you know um because i'm not gonna have any punches with me out in the field stuff like that um next thing so all the resources that i looked up um i use uh, Brownells, Brownells, and uh, uh, it started with a T, is like a Tiffany uh, firearms. And if there's any additional work I would do to this to this firearm system, I would probably just put on a uh, a different sight, like a red dot or something like that for shooting at the range but that's about it i would i really wouldn't do too much work to it i've never owned an ar type firearm before i've never i don't it's not something that i shoot on a daily basis or on a on a constant basis so i would like to get familiar with the with the actual firearm as is before i started making any different modifications or adding any, anything to it different trigger systems so part three uh like i said resources were brownells and the uh T tiffany uh triggers um the way they market them is pretty pretty basic they're not they're not really saying a whole lot it, they just kind of put the stuff out there and then you you get what what you are looking for um they have a lot that are drop in, so it's easy to remove and put in a new one if something happens to it, something like that. Um, they do have the different stages, single stage, double stage, for what type of firearm you are trying to shoot or use during the uh, during competition, stuff like that. So it, it all depends on what you're looking for. The way they market them, the way they put it on their on their websites like all the different stuff that you could you can do to them it's pretty pretty good um do i agree with some of these arguments um 
like some of the re uh, resources or reviews. I think it it's all up to the person. Every firearm is only is up to the person what they're looking for and what they want to get out of it. Okay, if if it's worth the money to purchase a two hundred dollar drop in trigger system to where I can just pull it out, clean it, put it right back in, not have to worry about pulling out different pins and springs and stuff. And it's what I want. Um, do I plan on dimpling my gas system? Right now, no. Uh, the way I have the way I got it assembled, I don't feel that it is necessary to dimple my gas block onto my barrel. Now, if I sh start shooting it more often and I notice it coming loose, then yeah, I'll probably go through that process and put a put a dimple spot onto the barrel. But as far as right now, no, I don't. I don't feel like there there's a need to. And then lastly, we're gonna perform a drop test. So let's reassemble it. All right, so let's get our spring and buffer reinserted here. Okay, charging block, our charging handle and bolt assembly. So first thing that we're gonna do, all right, we're not gonna really drop it, but what we are going to do, we are going to tap on it with a uh, with a mallet, okay? So I got our, our mallet here, and right now it's on safe, and so we're gonna tap around these this trigger area to see if we hear it engage, if we hear that, that, that hammer engage. And we're gonna tap both sides. And I'm, I'm not hitting it hard, but I am hitting it uh, effectively to where if, if I did drop this firearm, it would go off, all right? So now we're gonna try and do it in, uh, in fire. And so right now it's cocked, so I just did it in the fire. If, if it would have went off, then when I squeeze this trigger, I shouldn't be able to get anything going. See? So that that tells me that my drop test drop check works. And then another thing that people do sometimes is that they'll just they'll drop it on the ground just like so. Alright. So. Sorry about that. But what they'll do is they'll hold it up a little bit off the ground. And they'll just drop it down like that and then they'll check to see if it went off so there it was in the fire so now I'm gonna squeeze it again nope everything held drop check good safety works put it back back in safe and we'll see you next time